This is very exciting. In our last session, you get two presentations, two for the price of one. This is how we jam quality and value into our Quantum World Congress. We have uh, both Chloe Ryu and Catherine Simondi here to talk about how a telecom quantum safe footprint can help shape the future. I will give a very quick introduction of both Chloe and Catherine. They will each come up and share their thoughts and then we hopefully will have a little bit of time afterwards for some questions from the group. Chloe is a leading expert in quantum global business at SK Telecom with over 18 years of experience in the telecommunications industry with a particular focus on network engineering and quantum technology. She has a deep understanding of the challenges and opportunities of quantum technology in this industry and she is passionate about using quantum technology to solve real world problems and create new value for customers. It's exactly what we're trying to do here with industry advancements. Catherine Simondi is the Vice President of Marketing and Communications at ID Quantique. She brings over 15 years of experience in leading marketing and communication projects in multinational and smaller sized companies across various industries, including FMCG. I did not know what that was, I had to Google it. Fast moving consumer goods. Uh, as well as IT, and lately, the building and home automation industry. ID Quantique is a global leader in quantum safe security and quantum sensing, harnessing light to develop and industrialize advanced quantum products and technologies for organizations to help ensure long-term protection of data and public safety. So, first I would like you all to please welcome Chloe Ryu. Hello everyone, uh, it's great to see you here. I'm Chloe Ryu from SK Telecom and I lead SKT's quantum global business. Today, I would like to introduce you SK Telecom's quantum business, focusing on use cases in South Korea. I hope this will be an opportunity for you to discover, to discover how quantum cryptography is already being used in our everyday lives. Before taking a deep dive into the contents, I would like to also give you a brief overview of SK Telecom. SK Telecom is a mobile telecommunication company owned by SK Group, which is the second largest conglomerate in South Korea. SK Group has businesses in a variety of industries, including telecommunications, energy, and chemical, and semiconductors. Last year, in 2022, SK Group's revenue was over 200 billion US dollars, which represents about 7.2% of South Korea's GDP. Yeah, it's quite a big group. Yeah. <laughs> and SK Telecom is the largest mobile operator in South Korea with a market share of nearly 50%. And our vision is AI company that brings benefits to customers via differentiated technologies and services. Quantum is one of them, absolutely. And as a pioneer in the global mobile industry, SK Telecom has marked history by achieving the world's first commercialization of CDMA and LTA and 5G. The 5G quantum network that I will discuss today is also the first in the world to be commercialized. Here is the quantum journey of SK Telecom. In 2011, SKT began its quantum business by launching SK Telecom Quantum Lab. This decision was driven by our commitment to secure our network security in the emerging quantum era. As a network operator, we believe that starting a quantum business is a right way to meet the unique challenges and opportunities presented by this era. 
To be more specific, we are building the quantum communication infrastructure, not only to secure our network asset, but also to provide quantum safe security for, uh, to protect our customers' digital assets. For this, we invested and partnered with ID Quantic, the world leading quantum company in Switzerland in 2018, and have been working with them closely ever since. SKT has, has three pillars of quantum communication, quantum communication uh, equipment, QKD, QRNG, and quantum sensing. QKD, quantum key distribution, is a secure key exchange solutions using properties of quantum mechanics. It uses uh, optical signal, uh, which possess a minute amount of optical power as tiny as a single particle of light, a photon. And QRNG, quantum random number generator, is generate truly random number by using unpredictable nature of quantum mechanics. The reason I told you about the properties and nature of, a, of, of quantum technology is that I really want to emphasize that it gives us un unconditional security, thanks to that. So it's not a mathematical problem, it's not a logical algorithm that becoming more vulnerable in this coming era. And now I delve into the SKT's use cases for QKD. This is the first commercial case done in June 2016 for LTE backhaul protection with QKD between Sejong and Daejeon. The distance was 50 kilometers, and this was the first attempt to deploy QKD in live network in South Korea. And QKD is also applied 5G network. Uh, as I told you, QKD works with very small optical signal which limits its distance. So, therefore, to connect to longer distance, QKD trusted nodes are needed. In this case, the total distance to is 30, 330 kilometers to interconnect two switching centers on the SK Telecom's backbone. So, between Seoul and Daejeon, we deployed three QKD trusted nodes, and between Daejeon and Daegu, two QKD trusted nodes were implemented. And we are also work closely with the Korean government and its agencies to develop new QKD use cases. For example, we have participated in government funded project to protect disease data and water business data and administrative local government data. In particular, we deployed QKD to the National Convergence Network. 48 different government, local government departments covered with QKD, and it's about 800 kilometers. And this is part of South Korea's QKD network, which spanning over 2,000 kilometers. And this is our effort to integrate QKD to, with the existing encryption solutions. SK Telecom and ID Quantic work with uh, different network encryption solutions to upgrade them with QKD, making them quantum safe through the physical layers, from the physical layers to the transport layers. Adva, Hitachi, Thales, Nokia and Cisco are our main collaborators in this effort. And we are working together to achieve this goal in many different layers as described in the slide. Further, recently, 
SKT had an agreement with Equinix to apply QKD. The plan is to offer QKD as a service between Equinix data centers. First, a two company tested the service at an Equinix facility in Seoul. We plan to make QKD as a service possible in Equinix data centers and over its interconnections, offering it enterprise-only line that connects corporate headquarters, offices, and data centers. We hope that this kind of service will become a corporate subscription model in the future. Now, here's some examples of many commercial cases using QRNG. We collaborated with Samsung and Vinsmart to launch ID Quantic's QRNG embedded smartphone in South Korea and Vietnam, respectively. And we also impl implement QRNG on our 5G authentication server to fortify the 5G user authentication procedure. And this year, we unveil quantum enhanced crypto chip at MWC uh, to provide, uh, which provides a strong security while increasing economic efficiency. I've shown you you know, various use cases of quantum cryptography in a short time today. Uh, we have been working with our partners, many pilot projects, to do this. Through this project, uh, laboratory-grade technology is starting to be used in the real field, and the necessary requirements are being discovered in real network. Uh, as a result, now, Many people are already using quantum cryptography uh, services in South Korea through their smartphone they carry every day and network they connect to every day. The same is true even if they have never heard the word quantum. A comment that never goes away when we talking about quantum with people is it's too difficult or it's still too early. But one thing I really want to say with all the use cases that I've shared with you today is quantum cryptography is mature enough for us. So we can use it to protect ourselves and our customers. And we will continue to use, this, use and uh, research this technology to allow our customers live, to live their daily lives without knowing know such about such technologies and that is the path that SKT will yeah walk walk in the future so it's really great honor and pleasure to share SKT's quantum business uh, with all of value of our audience in this room and I would be very happy if you would contact me for further collaboration be because we are very open to a variety of partnership opportunities. And thank you for your time. And this is the Korean character saying thank you. 감사합니다. <laughs> and let me introduce uh, Catherine Simondi. She will explain more about the background and detail of this technology. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. Hello, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here with you. I'll just move to my slides. Um, um, fantastic. I mean, I really like to see these slides. It's amazing to see such a big company 
and boarding quantum technologies, showing us actually that you know it's in phones today. So as Chloe was saying, uh, you know people have quantum technologies in their pockets in South Korea. We hope this will go out of the country to other areas of the globe. Fantastic to see also Korea moving forward so quickly. It's a very innovative country. I was actually last week in Korea. Uh, it's it's really great. Um, so I'm in charge of marketing communication at ID Quantic. So let me. Uh, uh, talk about our activities and why it's important to move now. Um, let me present ID Quantic shortly. ID Quantic uh, is a pioneer, as Chloe said, in quantum technologies. Uh, the company was founded in 2001 by four physicists from the University of Geneva. Uh, today, our CEO is Grégoire Rubordi. He was the founder of the company, so he's still in the company. It's great, 22 years after. I would like to name also Professor Nicolas Gisin, who has always led the University um, uh, of Geneva in the Department of Quantum Physics. So he's one of our founders also. We are headquartered in Geneva, where the production is. Uh, we also have people here in Boston, um, and I will encourage you to come to our booth. We have a QKD demo. It will be a pleasure to talk about it and show you this demo. Uh, so we have our team from the US, who's here, of course. And in a second, you're going to understand why, of course, we are also in Seoul, and it's a pleasure to be here. We've got different activities, as Chloe uh, uh, talked about. So quantum safe security is the one I'm going to focus on today, and quantum quantum sensing technologies, where we actually produce single photon detectors or super, superconducting nanowire single photon detectors, best in class products, which are used by universities and labs all over the world. Um, so our partnership with SK Telecom began years ago uh, in 2016, where we actually worked together on producing a very, very small chip, which is in my pocket. Um, here. So a QRNG chip today is as small as 2.5 millimeters. That's why it's in phones, actually, and it can be in space. I mean, it's products which are certified. I'll be talking about it in a few minutes. So we collaborated and worked together. We saw that SKT was doing a fantastic job, and they saw that we had actually mature products, so they decided to invest in our company to help us grow. Uh, not only SK Tele SK Telecom invested at the time, but also Deutsche Telekom, Big Teleco operators, which was great for us. So today the company is 120 people all over the world, and we perform R&D, production, services, support, commercial uh, products, etc., to clients all over the world, uh, such as in the finance industry, um, in, in uh, university, IT security. Right, so let me go back into what brings us here when we speak about quantum safe security. Um, well, of course, today, uh, you know, in the conference, I think we've spoken a lot about the quantum threat, uh, about PQC also, and I'd like to focus on why we're talking about this. So today's cybersecurity world is at risk. Uh, what's happening? Well, exploits and attacks happen at the top of the technology stack layer, uh, which is... Uh, you know, uh, attacks, uh, you know, attackers try and look into what's going on at the user level because it's the easiest to attack. And going down the different layers and stacks, it gets more and more difficult today to really get into uh, the different levels into the network infrastructure. Now, what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, when quantum computing is strong enough uh, to break cryptography, well, the problem is going to be that actually the easiest will be to reach out to this network infrastructure layer, which is the cornerstone of our IT uh, technology. And so the attacks will be getting to that level, which is the level with all the high value uh, data is shared. It's where, you know, all the data is, is moving on the network from telco operators to business offices. And that's where it's going to be really critical because the access to this data, uh, there's also the, the harvest now decrypt later attack, which means that even people who are managing to get information now will be able to decrypt it, decrypt it later with quantum computing. So government and enterprises around the world, you know, are looking into this. I heard two words during these two last days, which are transitioning and migration. It's key to start now. Well, why? Because actually there's a cryptography risk, blind spot, and the reason for that is that cryptography is everywhere, but it's difficult to assess it. 
There are some tools now to help, but we know that discovery, cataloging, triaging is really difficult, it's manual, it's error prone, and so we know that migration to quantum safe is going to be a really hard task. And when we look at the network infrastructure, so now what is at risk, it, it means that it's going to be the largest cryptographic migration ever. When we look at solutions, um, we, pro we propose hybridization using different solutions available already today, and I'm going to talk about this now. Of course, PQC is the way the US is going today, but there's other technologies, such as quantum safe technologies, and QKD in, in particular, um, which is what Chloe spoke about. What is QKD? So QKD is a way to share a secret key between Alice and Bob, in a provably secure way, this key will be used in the context of symmetric cryptography. It ensures long-term confidentiality of the keys which are supplied to the encryptors. And so it makes QKD uh, the, the, uh, the technology which provides really ultimate security right now for long-term data protection. What's good also with QKD is that any eavesdropping attack will be immediately detected. And this is interesting. Now, looking at the adoption of technology, let's talk about uh, time dependence, because that's important to speak about this too. QKD and PQC uh, are not exactly at the same level. Because it relies on the laws of, quant of quantum physics, QKD will remain safe within the timeline of years. Whereas we know that Diffie-Elman, uh, which is currently used, has uh, a down uh, a period when it'll be unsafe, and we all know this. Now, what's going on about public um, PQC? Well, PQC is indeed, you know, the the algorithms which are coming and which are going to be announced by NIST as being resistant to quantum computing, but they are still mathematical solutions. And as a mathematical solution, we don't really know until when, you know, they will be resistant to the quantum computer. So again, hybridize with QKD and PQC for us is the good way to minimize risk and to ensure long-term security. We need to bridge the gap, definitely, uh, starting now. Bridging the gap means using current public key cryptography today and also making the most of these technologies which are already available. So we have to mix current, current public key cryptography with both PQC which is available, and we'll talk about that, and, and QKD. Now, in the future, of course, when quantum computing breaks public key cryptography, it'll be a mix of you know, quantum-safe solutions, PQC and QKD. Now, I want to share with you our view at ID Quantic of the adoption timeline of these quantum-safe technologies. Where do we stand today? Well, today we are, um, there are many deployments, uh, there are some deployments of QKD, let's say. I mean, Chloe has shown how much Korea is at the head of this, and SKT is leading this very much so. Now, I'd like to talk about another project, which is actually called EuroQCI. I don't know whether any of you have heard about that. It stands for European Quantum Communication Infrastructure. It's a huge project which is led by the European Commission to build by 2027 a quantum communication uh, infrastructure in production among the 28 state members of the European um, uh, Commission um, community. Sorry. And what is good here is that all the telcos in Europe, I mean, I'll just name a few, Deutsche Telekom, Orange, Telefonica, are on board and they are looking at these projects. So the phase one has just finished where all the countries submitted their projects and how they are going to build their communication infrastructure in the country. And then the idea is to link it between the different countries to go cross borders and to really implement QKD in Europe. Now, other countries I can name, Asia is very strong. I've just spoken about South Korea. Singapore is pretty strong too in the deployment, but there's also China. And China, we don't quite know what's going on. We only know that they've got a very big network protected by QKD. What's going on in the US? Well, actually, fortunately, there's all these US initiatives, which started in 2018 or even before. Now there's this US executive inventory uh, directive, which is pushing to the migration to quantum safe. We've got, of, of course, NIST, uh, which is 
um, going to get its PQC suite out by uh, 2024. I mean, there was a Lily Chen talking two days ago at the data center workshop here, uh, and she explained, you know, all the steps and all the different rounds. We're at four, round four, um, where, you know, this, uh, this is pushing the adoption of quantum technologies, of course. Uh, we see the adoption by different industries who are looking at these technologies. And then I want to just name year 2 q Have you heard about that? year 2 quantum Right, so on the top right, I've just put the countdown, which was released last year by the CSA, the Cloud Security Alliance, who set the countdown saying by 2030, that's when the quantum computing is going to break cryptography. And so by then, there will be probably a quantum panic. And what will the quantum panic bring? Well, I think it will further ease or force to accelerate the adoption of all these technologies, PQC and QKD. Now, let me quickly just speak about what Chloe mentioned. She mentioned maturity of the technology. Yes, it is mature. I encourage you again to come to our booth. Chloe will be with us. Nokia will be with us. Why? You know, we've been producing QRNGs since 2001. At the time, it was big boxes. Now, as you see, it's very small chip, as small as two millimeters, to be integrated in HSMs, in satellites, in different environments. The example of the phone is just incredible to us, fascinating. What Chloe said actually is that people don't even realize they've got quantum technologies, <laughs> which is a good thing in a sense. You know, they want security, they've got it. I just want to mention NIST here and certification. I mean, IDQ as a leader is working hard with a lot of different partners in standardization efforts, certification efforts. This is essential for the adoption of the technology. Um, our products, our QRNG chips, has just been validated by NIST, Entropy Source Validated Certified. What does, that, does this mean? You know, in the US specifically, uh, to use products by the US government, they need to be certified. And so there's a, what is called a CMVP program, which is a crypto module validation program, which requires that we use or the companies use products which are certified with the best entropy. So I'm glad to say that our products have passed, that they're, they're the first one ever, quantum products, to pass this validation. Now, going back to QKD, again, you know, it's our fourth generation of products that we've released. You can come and see upstairs on the, on the exhibition floor. We've got a live demo. The product is a 1U, which fits any data center. Uh, fourth generation, we've got different products for different needs, for the backbone, for the metro access solution, and even platforms for academia and research labs who want to test the technology. And as mentioned by Chloe, you know, this is this fantastic huge network which was built with QKD in Korea. Again, this slide you've seen, so I won't insist on it, but just to say it's, you know, adding a quantum layer to the encryption and working with these major companies who are onboarding. I don't know whether you had a chance to attend Nokia's talk over the last two days. Well, they've been explaining that for them, you know, it's not only providing network solutions to their customers, but cybersecurity is a top priority for them. And they've added quantum to their roadmap. They've got a very clear roadmap, and we're very happy to partner with them. Not only, I mean, Chloe mentioned all these key partners for us. Just want to add one thing, you know, QD, QAD is hard, <laughs> hardware, but a key management system is essential also. Why? Because we want to go to further, bigger networks, and this enables, you know, to build and to go into any network configuration. I can mention point to point, ring, mesh, star topologies, which we're doing, and the KMS is like, does the magic you know, providing any key, whatever the, the um, position of the encryptor. So it's not only hardware we provide, but with the hardware we provide software to enable easy implementation. Now, Chloe spoke about this too. Once we've got this technology, what do we do? Well, actually, we're working hard with telco partners. We're working hard with data center partners to think with them what is the next business model because, of course, at the end of the day, it's generating revenue by providing more service to the customers. And this is exactly what SK Telecom is doing. They're looking into the model, and we want to provide with them quantum-safe bandwidth to their customers uh, to provide premium um, service. Now, quickly, my key takeaways. I think you've heard this all over the, the three few days when talking about quantum security. The advice is really not uh, to delay, 
not to delay because winter is coming. Crypto winter is coming. It's sad to say that because, you know, quantum technologies are fantastic. We've been look, talking about quantum computing and all the bright side of it. You know, the applications that are existing, the ones we don't even figure out now. But actually, quantum computing is a real threat to the whole cybersecurity, and it could even change the world. Um, so really, it's time to look into this. I've heard this. I mean, there were gentlemen from the White House talking about transitioning, talking about migration. You know, they are all into this. Do not delay. Know your data also, because, you know, data has a different um, shelf length. So you really have to think about what's, what are the vulnerabilities, you know, what is to be protected. The gentleman at the White House was saying, you know, you can't do everything, so you have to decide what is the priority. And indeed, this comes to knowing your data. One easy way is improving key generation. I've spoken about QRNG. I think this is an easy step to do to improve your crypto uh, systems immediately with more entropy. But then, you know, the steps will be to pursue crypto agility, looking at both QKD and PQC. Um, and it's not that complex. The technology is there ready for you. One size does not fit all. It's just to say that, you know, everyone is unique. All the companies will have to decide on their own strategy to get uh, to this migration to quantum safe. Uh, with this, I want to thank you. I think it's the last talk. So thank you very much. And please come and see us. Thank you. If folks have, we do have a little bit of time if either of you would like to uh, stay at the podium and maybe address any questions from the audience. Are there any questions? Uh, I'm Joel Fang from Toshiba America. Uh, I have a quick question to Chloe mm -hmm. uh, regarding to the QKD network in South Korea. Mm -hmm. You can produce the tr trust node between the, uh, the point mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, why do you need to uh, trust more? And the second one, what does trust mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, as I told you, uh, as I described, P -Q -P uh, QKD uses a physical uh, signal of photon. It's a very small photon, so it limits its distance. It can go, yeah, it can go the, you know, to 200 kilometers, such like that. It's about, the, its limitation is about now seven, 70 kilometer or 80 kilometers. Yeah, as of now, we are yeah, working hard to expand that the distance. So, because that, uh, that's why we, ha we need some, you know, uh, nodes between the two different, you know, uh, switching centers, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the yeah trust in those. I don't know why the we use the trust <laughs> trusted nodes, but maybe Bruno can, Bruno can help. Well, so the yeah. name trusted node means that you have to trust that the keys are safe in this <laughs> node. But that's not a problem with telcos because you already you already have these safe houses all around the network. Mm -hmm. And actually, if I may, one add, one added thing you need in Korea, you need this because you also want to be able to deliver keys to various places. <coughs> so if you had only a very long uh, range uh, node, then you wouldn't be able to deliver key in between. Okay. So I think the architecture of Korea has been done in such a way that basically it balances the need to de deliver keys in different places and also having enough key rate to deliver to all of them. It's not always better to improve the, the length because then you have less keys. So it's a really a balance. And um, each country will be different. Uh, in China, they do something. In the Korea, they do something. In Singapore, they are very, very short links. Uh, maybe there is nobody from... But they say the fiber is a little bit... Uh, not. I mean, there are so many nodes that there is a, a lot of loss. So even though it's short, you still need many nodes. So it will be really... Every country will have a different structure. Yeah. Okay, I, I got it. One, one side of the photon deliver, and the other side photon capture, and they produce again the photon something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any comments? All right. Thank you again.